All mine. Um, hey, everybody, how's it going? Oh, I just have this nice great. array of people. It's been a while since I've done this on Zoom, so this is going to be fun and great. <laughs> um, okay, so I have a half an hour. Uh, this content, if nobody <laughs> engages or um, if I just get to ramble on through numbers, doesn't take a half an hour. Fun. And if people engage, which would be awesome, then we get to take uh, get the full max out of it. Um, so I've been asked here today, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll start there. Um, so my name is Nathan Graham. I've been in the industry for 14 years. Um, I've been licensed since 2010. Uh, so if uh, a little bit about that journey, the very first year, and I'll do this super quick, the very first year I got into real estate, my wife and I did not live in Durham region. That's where I am now, Durham region. We did not live here. We quit our jobs. She did not get licensed. We took out a line of credit and we jumped into real estate. And that's how I ended up starting off real estate with this $18,000 line of credit. Now, back when I first got in the industry, I felt like I knew a lot more than I did now. And so uh, I made all these glorious mistakes. I spent tons of, tons of money on marketing, tons of money on flyers and everything else. And I had a great mentor at the time. Um, my first year was horrendous. And I'll get that out of the way right now. So is, is anybody uh, from the few people who have their cameras on just by nodding or hands up? Has anybody had kind of like a, a struggling year? in 2023 this is the way a lot of 2023 has been and it's not the first time we've seen it um one of the big things though as as i was getting in the industry with my mentors my mentor eventually took me after my first year my first nine months of only selling one house our line of credit was up my wife and i knew young couple and he he basically just said just start doing the work just start following up right and that's what I started doing. Um, I started following up literally that that day and I closed off the year with uh, six more deals um, in my very first year. And then the next year, um, it really took off. And, and then just a really quick uh, synopsis, is that the right word? I don't know. But anyways, just a really quick thing about that time period is um, after that point, I've joined teams uh, in my first few years afterwards. So I can definitely relate with that experience. And then I was an individual agent for a few years. Uh, with my other brokerage, winning top awards, top 20%, top 1% in Durham. I ran a team um, for quite a time. Uh, my top, I think I had set five agents and seven employees. It was pretty good going at the time. And, and then I tried my hand in uh, running a brokerage, which was all sorts of fun and everything else. And now I'm back to selling real estate and teaching and coaching and having a lot of fun with it. So I was asked by uh, by Jen to come in and talk about just something in general. And I thought I would uh, get back to the basics because like this year, again, if anybody's feeling it, um, this year is a year of getting back to the basics. It really feels like uh, starting off and, and really generating that business. Would most people agree with that? All right. So yes. I you did. sorry. It was just a delayed. Yes, Nathan. You're awesome. Oh. <laughs> Perfect. And I do have a tendency to ramble on. So I am looking at everybody. So I'm just turning up my volume here. I am looking at anybody. And if I'm rambling and you have something, just start throwing something at the screen or something like that. Um, okay. So what I'm going to show you today is the million dollar model, right? We are going to talk about those numbers. But first and foremost, um, when, when I say someone can make a million dollars in 2024, uh, and, and let's be honest for a second, how many people are kind of like, Okay, buddy, <laughs> maybe some big teams can do it, but that's the big teams. I, I can't do that. I don't have the database. I don't have whatever, or they think this is just a line. Who kind of gets those weird anxiety feelings? <laughs> it's okay. Now on the vice versa, who here is kind of excited being like, dang, I'd love to know the roadmap on how to do that. So let's start off this way. Um, sorry, my iPad keeps timing out on me. Uh, I'm going to write down some goals. If someone either wants to put it in chat or in, uh, or just unmute yourself and say something, um, what is your financial goal this year? Like not just the, I want to make some money goal and I'm going to survive goal. Like what is the, if I hit this number, that'd be completely kick-ass goal. Who wants to throw out a few of those numbers? 500K. 500K. We have another 500K in the chat from Savannah, 200,000 yeah. from Lauren, we got 250 net from Jake. Beauty. Keep popping in them, folks. <laughs> Write them in the chat. And by the way, if you're, do we have anybody who's fairly new to your real estate, like first year or, or second year? Um, 
I want to let you know, when I first got into real estate, the most I had ever made was $29,568, but that's not the point. Um, that's the most I ever made in a year. And so when people were like, I want to make 500 grand or I want to make 250, I was like, I want to make 50. I would be thrilled with 50 grand take home. If I could double my income at 60, that would be amazing. So just because you see some big goals, um, the math I'm going to show you today, and I know everybody, I, like I said, math and everybody just lit right up. It was phenomenal. The math I'm going to show you today works for any amount. So don't be intimidated by big numbers. If your goal is 50 to 100 grand, that's completely okay too. Okay. So as I said, I love math. Um, and don't worry, this is not going to be a math course. You're not going to get workshops or anything like that. Um, what I'm going to do, can I share my screen? I just want to make sure this works. Nice. I love it, Anna. Us math people are going to take over the world one day. Oh. Okay. Is that clear for everybody? Can everybody see that? Yep. Okay. This is my whiteboard. I'm a huge whiteboard person. Okay. So I want to back up. Here's the thing I absolutely love and adore about math. Okay. It's not that I enjoy doing it other than the fact I can tell you probably 2.5% of any number that's in existence. I love doing it because math contains truth in it, right? So when we look at math, you could either love doing math or hate doing math. But the reality is, um, without diving too deeply into it, one plus one equals two, right? Like math contains truth. And in real estate, it's not that different um, in that regard. So let me ask you guys a quick question before I dive into the numbers. Has anybody here had an experience with a bad agent? And I just mean really bad. Yes, 100%. Yes. Who here actually got into the industry because their realtor was so horrible that they were like, damn, if he can do it, I can do it. Right? I would say she too, but typically guys are a lot worse. I don't know why that is. We're just guys. Um, have you ever met a realtor who is really, really bad, yet really, really successful as well? Like, have you ever done a deal where you're like, damn, this guy does 100 deals a year or this lady does 100 deals a year and this is how she treats people? And we all experience that. So I want to make something clear right now. This used to confuse the crap out of me, right? Because in my very first year of real estate, before I started following up, I was a super nice guy who here just wanted to help all their clients and wanted to serve all their clients and was like, I'm not even going to make people sign in on my website because that's all mean to them. And I don't want to put them in that weird part because I'm a nice guy. I'm going to give my information, right? That's why I was in the first year. And um, do you know how many people really appreciated the fact that nobody had to sign into my website and how many leads I got out of it? Zero, none, right? So I was a super nice guy, literally wanting to do anything and everything for my clients. And I wasn't busy. And meanwhile, people who I really had no respect for were just killing it. They were popping off five deals a month, six deals a month. So before we jump into something, I want to let you guys know this confused me. And I think I finally figured it out. Hustle beats talent every single day. You could be the most talented person in the world. And if you don't hustle, if you don't do the work, you will never be successful. And on the reverse side, you could be the most horrendous human being in the world. You could treat people poorly and you can never get one iota of repeat business and hustle hard and have a successful career. Does that make sense to everybody? So yes. what we're talking, yeah, like what we're talking about today is... We're talking about the hustle, but when we talk about the numbers behind the real estate model, this is just about doing the work. And I want to be very clear. This is not about it being difficult. It's not a hard thing I'm going to show you. It just is time consuming, right? Yes, if we have time today, I can share with you some really good scripts. The reality is, though, if you practice the hustle, if you practice the numbers, it doesn't matter your scripts. It doesn't matter anything else. You will be successful. And then when you get really good at the scripts 
and you get really good at the hustle, those numbers and those conversion rates start to massively increase. Okay. So when I go back to my first year of real estate, the reason why the first nine months I didn't sell real estate is I didn't do the work. I just practiced my craft. I was in script classes. I was in education. That was it. Once I started working, that's when it changed. So I'm going to show you the magic number to this. And the magic number that you're going to look at today is 20 contacts. I love technology. 20 contacts a day is what you are shooting for. Okay. Now, a lot of people ask me, what is a contact? And I'm going to be very clear on this. All a contact is, is a conversation initiated about real estate with somebody you've never had a conversation with before, regardless of the outcome of that conversation. So I was a little wordy, but let me explain. So um, who here woke up this morning is like, damn, I am looking forward to door knocking today. There's usually one. Okay, we're going to use door knocking as the example because it's a very easy way to pump through these contacts, but this math goes to everything, okay? If I'm door knocking and I knock on the door and I say, hi, my name is Nathan Graham with EXP Realty. A house just sold around the slam and they shut the door on my face. I'm like, dude, that's one contact. I engaged in a conversation with a complete stranger about real estate, regardless the outcome, okay? And legit, that is a contact. If I do 20 of those a day, that will obviously with math, give me 100 a week because I only want to work uh, five days and that's over five days of lead gen. Okay. Once I go through 100 contacts a week, or I could even do this in a day, it's going to average out seven to eight leads. And, and by the way, they're not all slamming the door. <laughs> no, I do want to back up to in, my, in my door knocker. I was going to say, Anna, our door knocker would be like, um, Nathan, I've had that once in my whole career. <laughs> and you know what? I had only one in the whole 20 years. <laughs> per, it, like, Yeah, it, it actually very rarely happens. Usually they're like very polite. They open up this like, like slight little bit and they're like, yes, no, thank you. And then you go on to the next one. Ah, fun fact, by the way, though, I once had someone very rudely treat me uh, badly at the door. And if you really want to get really good revenge on that one, send them an apology card. Um, You have their address and you can geo where house their name and you send a card with and say, like, listen, man, I'm really super sorry for bothering you that day. And they're like really squeaking those emotions on them. But anyways, seven to eight leads. That's the numbers that come out. Now, seven to eight people are going to put up their hand and say, yes, I'm willing to engage with you about further conversation in real estate. I'm willing to get your newsletter. I want to be kept up to date with the market. I'm thinking about buying and selling for the next six months or the next year, whatever case may be. Okay. Um, I think this is a good point to stop for a second and, and have a quick conversation about something. Real estate is a future prospect business. Uh, you cannot live in the now. What you do today pays out in 90 days, roughly, right? The work, we are always working towards our future. And every once in a while when door knocking, and Anna, I, if you're the resident door knocker, I'm sure you've seen this. The vast majority of time, it's like building the database. But every once in a while, you have someone put up their hand saying, yeah, I'm ready to go right now, right? And in my mind, those are the gifts that God just put in front of you um, that allows you to get business right away. This is a future. The most people we're talking to are, are 90 to 120 days um, out for income. So what we do today works that time. So if you go out door knocking for two weeks and you come back and you're like, oh, Nathan, man, I went and tried your method. I did get a few people saying, yes, but I haven't got a single lead or nobody's willing to do something right now. This clearly doesn't work. You haven't given it the time. Okay. So you have to live into that future. It's kind of like... Uh, Every time uh, New Year's rolls around and I go back to the gym and after two days of working out, I'm like, do I have abs yet? Right? Um, two days is not going to give me abs back at the gym, right? So if I go out and do this, this is going to give me seven to eight leads every single week. Okay? Now, um, I'm assuming most of us have a, a database system. If you don't have a database system, get a coach, get a mentor, get a database system because database is your blood. It is your life. Um, I literally envision, I'm, I'm a giant child. So I literally envision Pac-Man 
um, eating those little goblet things. And each goblet is a lead and Pac-Man's my database. And my whole point is to fill Pac-Man every single day. Um, so you get a database. And when I put those seven to eight people in my database at the end of the week, I know that those numbers are going to convert to one in 10 people on a touch program are going to transact with me a year. Okay. Now, this is not a course because we don't have time to go into what a proper touch program is, but I'll give you kind of a rough idea of what that looks like in my world. When I have a new lead come in, they go on what's called the 10 days of pain or gain, if you want to be positive about it, where I'm going to attempt to contact them every single day for 10 days. I'm going to give them a phone call every day until I talk to them. And I'm also going to send them email stuff every single day until I talk to them. Whether I engage with them or not, after that, they go on to what's called approximately a 33 touch program. Now, I actually do more than this. So we just called it a 33 touch. So in that 33 touch program, like what I do, for example, is every single Monday, I do a market Monday video to my entire database where I'm giving an idea what's going on in bond rates. I'm giving an idea what happened the last week. I'm looking at the, the notice pages on Treb and I'm trying to figure out out of the 50 homes that sold, how many sold over asking to get an idea of where the market's heading, right? So I touch on them all once a week via email. That's a touch. I also hold two client events a year. That's two extra touches. On holidays, I'm going to send them other things. That is a touch. And then I'm also going to call them quarterly or, well, at the very least text, but I do prefer uh, calling. I'm going to call them quarterly to make sure everything is okay, to see if they have any real estate needs, right? So when I talk about putting them into their database in the one in 10, it's not like I just put them into a database, found the next touchdown program that's going to automate everything for me and I leave it completely alone. Again, hustle beats talent every single day. So I'm going to make sure that I'm actually properly touching on them. And I know that number in one in 10 people in my database is going to convert, okay? So we're going to take a break from this math for a minute. Before I carry on, does anybody have any questions about this? All right. Also, to be very, very clear, again, this is a long-term based thing. It's not like you get 10 people in your database week one because you hustled extra hard and all of a sudden you got this glorious transaction out of it. What I can tell you, though, is I've recently gotten about 25 internet leads in, so 25 people added to my database and I'm already showing two people out of that. So the one in 10 number for me right now is working out, number one. Number two, the math works on laws of averages, right? So for example, if I go back to your leads, right? Out of every 100, maybe I door knock 100 doors and I talk to 100 people and I get one lead. And I'm like, well, clearly that seven to eight leads doesn't work. Well, when I go out the next day and I door knock and I talk to 100 people, maybe I get 16 leads. I literally door knocked the other day. Uh, well, I say the other day, it was actually in December. Um, but I door knocked in December and I ended up, I think I only door knocked, I only talked to 18 people or 14 people and I put eight people on my newsletter from the neighborhood. So those were fantastic results for the day. So keep in mind, these are laws of averages that we're doing. It's over time or over numbers. Make sense for everybody? All right. So what's the average sale price you guys want to go off of? I think across Canada right now, it's a little over 800. Um, if I, I think that's on the low side, would you guys tend to agree with that? 800 is kind of on the low side for average sale price? Maybe give or take? I think 800 is pretty accurate. Okay. So let, let's take 800, um, thousand, right? And I'm going to times that by two and a half percent. That gives me a $20,000 commission. Does that make sense? You guys want to have some fun, by the way. I remember my first year of real estate doing a deal for $350,000, which paid me roughly $7,500. And I was almost a part of the luxury division with my brokerage. God, real estate's good right now. Okay, so... If I want to make $1 million and you can work this out however you want. And again, I'm not 
we're not going in because we don't have the time to talk about expenses, to talk about splits, to talk about net and gross and all the rest. I'm going to let you do that all on your own. But I'm going to go that. And I'm going to divide that by $20,000. That means I need to do uh, 50, 50 deals. deals a year. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, who's still a little freaked out? They're like, 50 deals, that sounds like a lot. Like the average realtor does four. So who's here like, oh, that's kind of actually, or who's actually feeling a little bit better right now? That's like, actually 50 deals to make a million dollars. That's only 4.8 a month or 4.4 a month, whatever that works out to be. Okay. So we have 50 deals a year. Now, do you remember my numbers of my database? One in 10 people will transact on a proper touch program. So in 2024, how many people did I need in my database to do 50 deals on Jan 1, 2024? 500? 500. Okay. So at the beginning of Jan 1, if I had, yeah, that's one in 10, right? Yes. If I had 500 people in my database on a proper touch program between referrals, listings, buys, and sells, there would be 50 deals in there for me. Okay. And if you're starting off fresh with a database, we know if I door knock 100 doors or talk to 100 people every week, I'm going to add seven to eight people to my database. Is this math all making sense so far of how we're going to do this? So if I need 500 people to my database, I'm going to take two weeks off for a vacation. I need to add 10 people a week. That's with two weeks vacation to my database. Now, again, going off the numbers, if I happen to know that I get 100 contacts in a week, I get seven to eight leads. That means roughly 120-ish contacts, give or take 125, should get me my 10 people. One twenty-five divided by five, which means I need to add 25 people a day. Or I need, sorry, not add. I need to talk to 25 people a day. And if you talk to 25 people a day, that will build to your million dollar model in real estate. Now I've run these numbers and uh, I, I know how much time it takes. And it depends if you're like a high I or a high D, like how social you are. But I can get through my 20 contacts door knocking in about an hour and 15 minutes. And just out of curiosity, I don't know if you track it. Do you know how many, how long would you have to door knock being a door knocker? Hence why I'm picking on you. How long would you have to door knock to talk to roughly 25 people? And I mean, like bad conversations, good. It doesn't matter. Just talk to 25 people. When you, to talk to 25 people, depending on the day of the week and uh, subdivision. Uh, in a larger one, then it's like large, large lots. It may take like uh, maybe two and a half hours, if not three. In a subdivision, it could be just one hour. And that's enough. Perfect. Awesome. So sometimes it's three, sometimes it's one. So let's average that out to two hours. So if you do two hours of work a day, that's all you got to do is go out and door knock for two hours of work a day. You will have a job that will pay you a million dollars as long as you're putting people into the database and everything else. That is the raw numbers of real estate. And I think as Anna just pointed out so perfectly, sometimes that takes one hour, sometimes it takes three. It's a law of averages that goes out, okay? So whoever put $500,000 down, congratulations, you only have to work half an hour a day, maybe an hour, right? Because we're just gonna be cutting these numbers in half, right? And congratulations to those who put $250,000 down. You officially get to work part-time and make six figures. Now, let's quickly deal because we only got about five minutes left. So I want to deal with, um, because a question I used to ask myself is, and maybe you're asking yourself this, or maybe I'm just bringing up a, a limited belief for you, but then why isn't everybody in real estate millionaires if it's really this easy? And then I asked myself the question, why do I not weigh 190 pounds and I'm completely ripped and I know jujitsu? Um, because 
no matter how much I have a desire to go do it, I don't go to the gym every day. I don't always watch my diet and I don't definitely, I'm not enrolled in a jujitsu class, right? Um, the reason why people don't do this is I guarantee you guys this, you now know the numbers and we're going to find all the reasons not to do those numbers. And I could come back in a week and the vast majority of people are going to be like, man, I really love that course. I really love you explain the numbers. And I went out door knocking one day last week. And I'm on, I want to be clear on something. I'm using door knocking as the example. If you're doing an open house, like uh, who here likes open houses? Quick show of hands. Um, if you're doing an open house, you might only get, I don't know, 10 people through. So there's only 10 contacts you made that week. 20 if you have a good one two days in a row, right? So then you're like, well, I made 20 contacts a week, which means I'm only going to get one to two leads, which means I'm only going to get about 50 people in the database. And I wonder why I'm only selling five deals a year in real estate. As a side note, did that example just show people why they're not doing the 10, 20, 30 deals a year? Because when I lower it down to why we're just doing open houses, then people are like, well, yeah, no, that's crazy. That's why I'm not doing those open houses or those, uh, those amount of deals. Does all this make sense? So whatever way you choose to lead generate, and that's the whole point of this, whatever way you choose to lead generate, if you want a million dollar model, you have to get 25 contacts a day. And when I say you choose, I mean, go nuts. I've created, I have gotten so much business through shooting pool at pool halls, being a part of leagues. I used to never rent an office. I would do this is back when I drank. I would just go have one or like seven, like seven pints at a pub. Um, and I would do all my data entry for my day at the pub and I get to talk to everybody around me. I would choose a different pub a few days a week. So I get to know all the regulars and I used to get business that way. Um, hell, for some reason, when I go on group vacations, I still get business on that. Um, and what I'm trying to tell you is it just wasn't enough contacts I was making. I was getting contacts and my business was showing those contacts, but I just wasn't getting enough contacts for my goals. So then I had to find a way to supplement it. Tifa, you have a question? I do. Yes. Hi. Good morning. Um, you said, if I'm not mistaken, uh, if you door knock and the person doesn't respond, that's a touch or that's a contact, correct? Not if they don't respond. They have to at least answer the door. Right. Not responding in the sense of responding to the door, responding to you and be become part of your database. Yeah, exactly. Like, like if, if they don't respond at all to me, like, I mean, they don't even open the door, they don't come, then that doesn't count. But if they that open the door, count. yeah, okay. if they open so the how... door and they don't engage with me, then that does count because I engaged with them. You have to engage with a person. So how would the person not uh, sharing contact and becoming part of your database? Um, how, how would they not? Well, no, or how, how, how would, would I get that them to? Be... No, I'm asking how would that one person become part of the 20 people you need to um, get into your database if, you, if they didn't give you their contact? Okay. How, I, how, how does that? More of a, mm -hmm. I, I thought it was more of a joke that Nathan kind of like was making, like just about the door in general. Obviously, if they don't give the contact information, the fact you've had a conversation means you did have a contact. It's just not going in your database, right? Okay. I just thought there yeah. was a secret recipe. <laughs> I thought there was a secret sauce, a recipe to his sauce here. I thought maybe yeah, exactly. he could share. Exactly. Yeah, no. Yeah, it's more about exactly that. That's why I need 125 contacts because I'll get a whole lot of no's to put 25 people in my database for those 25 yeses, right? Um, by the way, though, if you ever want to know the secret sauce to that is the number one mistake I definitely see realtors make, but I say number one, a top mistake realtors make is they make their script all about them and not about the client. Like, for example, hi, I have a buyer looking to buy in your area and it's all about them. I've actually changed my scripting around for that database. I say, hi, I'm Nathan Graham with EXP. Listen, I've been a realtor for X amount of years. I just did an open house or a house just sold or blah, 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 whatever. And I happen to know that when that happens, there are always people looking to buy in the area. So I'm curious, have you thought about selling? Can I support you in real estate right now? And I've used those words specifically. Can I support you in real estate right now? And I can tell you the reaction is absolutely a phenomenal return back of people who say yes, first of all. And then I get to say, well, fantastic. Can one of those support ways be, can I keep you updated so you're informed and ready to go? 
I make everything about the person. And when they're done talking, this is a, a script I now use in almost all my conversations. I say, well, great. Well, I'm at your door right now, or we're on the phone call right now. Before I let you go, do you have any other questions I can help answer for you? I make the entire script about them, not about me, not about my stats, not about my listing, not about my buyers. It is 100% about them, the person in front of me. And my, my response changed dramatically. So there's a little bit of a secret sauce there in all things, open houses too. Okay, so that somehow took 30 minutes already. Um, Anna? I just wanted to add something, Nathan, a, a great thing that you mentioned, you write a card to the person who maybe was rude to you or something. I learned from Jennifer years ago, um, when you door knocking, she always had, and I always have a $5 Tim Hortons card because mm. there are people that you woke up and they are on shift work, right? They were sleeping and he still opens the door like almost half sleeping and uh, no, no, I'm sorry. I just, I said, oh, I'm sorry to disturb you. Here is the you know, just for oh, my apology, here is the Kim uh, um, Hortons card. That's what actually Jennifer started to do, and I learned it from her. That is a brilliant idea. I really like that. Like, what, one of the big things, when you're door knocking, you're lead generating to strangers, just remember, you're invading their space and their time, right? Um, and a lot of people are open to that conversation, but some people are not. So I like to respect everybody where they're at in that moment. And that's a fantastic thing. And the follow with that, Anna, I also used to do, um, uh, well, $10 gift cards. I'm probably going to dip down it to five now that I know that's what other people are doing. Um, but when I put my open house signs in front of the directional signs on someone's lawn in front of the house, I would door knock them and just say, hey, I know this is on the government side of the lawn, but I know it's also kind of a pain for you. So I just wanted to give you a little something to say for the, the headache. Right. And it was great ways of just making contacts. So. All right. Um, I don't know how strict time is, but 932. Uh, do we have time for more questions if people have more questions? We can do a couple minutes. Guys, do you have any other questions for Nathan? Hi. Sure. Um, I'm Alex. I would have a quick question. Wait. And Go ahead, um, Alex. Uh, so this is actually my first year going into residential. My background is commercial um, and I loved, loved, loved building walking. So hearing that, um, you know, residential building walking um, kind of converts into as much success is, um, is exciting to me. Uh, but my question is, I found in building walking, um, you know, after doing it enough times, you start to see the most success you'd have at a certain time of the day. And what I found is, you know, you, you're you getting in, trying to talk to CEOs, COOs, and you want to get them early, like before mm -hmm. they start having to put out fires. Um, is there a certain time of the day that you find you have the most success with residential door knocking? Uh, I'll let Anna follow up on that one too, because she definitely probably does it more than I do. But I do want to be clear myself. I'm with you. I find mornings have always been the best turnaround time, not necessarily for getting the most contacts, but for getting the most quality in contacts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I want to share just quickly uh, a very fascinating study they did. I think it was like Israel or someplace in the Middle East. They did this um, study on judges who did parole for prisoners and their system's a little different. It's not like Canada where they get through like two a week. They would get through like 30 a day, right? Um, and they were just like popping off paroles and prisoners. In the morning time, when your energy bar is absolutely at its most, which is in the morning, you're most well-rested, you're most engaging, you had a 70% more chance of getting parole by the judge than if your case was in the afternoon. Because in the afternoon, the idea was, the theory, the study, was it had to do with the judge's energy levels were so drained, they wouldn't properly look at the case and they just want to get the day done, right? And there are so many more stories coming out of how morning is by far your most productive time. It's by far your most open up mind is why we lead. It's like if you're lead generating in the afternoon, lead generate in the morning, because not only are your potential clients more of open mind, you are of more open mind at the same time. Now, that's me. Um, a good friend of mine, uh, he didn't start his work day until 1 p.m. And uh, he slept in until 11. And he has an amazing real estate career. And he hustles hard. So I think 
hustle is the more important conversation behind it. But for me, who likes to maximize the time I'm putting towards it, I definitely prefer mornings um, in that regard. Anna? Weekends, 10 a, after 10 a.m. But Saturday and Sunday, I find out the most productive because most of the families are home. But after 10 a.m., after they slept enough and had breakfast. And uh, during the weekdays, after 4, 4.30, when all the kids are back from school, and moms are not so like in hustle and uh, rush to go to outside to get the kids from the school bus. Hmm. There you go. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Awesome. Uh, Wendy, I think you had your hand up. Did you have a question you want to quickly ask? Um, I was just wondering, Nathan, are you going to share um, some of your scripts with us? Uh, okay. So which, yeah, I definitely can. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll share the essence of all scripts that I do. And then the situation that I'm in front of, um, doesn't really matter. So, um, my whole point to any script is going down to the idea of applying for the job of being their realtor. That, that is 100% it. So for example, if I'm at an open house, um, the first for in an open house, as an example, um, the first thing you have to do is become their friend. And if, if you can't break through that friendship, there's no point talking about business because they don't care. They only want to deal with someone they like first, right? So I'm going to observe them quite well. I'm going to talk about the hat that they're wearing if it's a local sports team. Um, if you don't know what peacocking is, definitely check out peacocking because if they're wearing like a big hat or an earring or a big necklace, they want you to ask about it, even though they're not going to be like, hey, look at my big necklace, right? Find out what they're they're wanting you to ask about. Everybody has something, right that they appreciate about themselves right um so i build that friendship then i go into some technical things um and i'll build up my credibility i'll talk about things like uh um what to look for how to find the date and windows how to tell whether it's a high or mid efficiency furnace i'm going to point out things from my experience that builds my credibility or my profession ability um but the whole point is i always want to boil them down to this fact where i would say okay wendy hey listen this was absolutely fantastic do you happen to have anybody who's currently helping you find real estate? And maybe they're like, yeah. And I'm like, well, have you signed a contract with them? No, blah, 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 blah. Um, and I want to say, great. Well, the good news is, Wendy, every realtor you meet from this point going forward is going to apply for the job of being your realtor. And I'm going to as well. Now, I do like to operate a little differently. I don't believe just because we had this one conversation or because I showed you one house that I'm automatically the person you have to go with. I believe I have to earn the job of being your realtor. And that's what I would like the opportunity to do. So if it's okay with you, I want to go out once or twice, show you a few homes, or I want to come over and give you an idea of what your home is worth and give you an idea of what I do to sell homes. And that's going to be my interview process. And afterwards, if you think it's great that we work together, let's work together. And if you don't like me at all and we're not jiving, 100%, go ahead, ghost me. You'd never have to speak to me again. I'm completely okay with either option. How does that sound? So every script I do is always going to boil down to applying for the job of being their realtor. And I have to work very hard to earn that position. Right. Um, so door knocking, uh, same sort of idea. I'm going to apply value to them. Hi, my name is Nathan. Uh, listen, a house just sold down the street. And that usually means two or three people are looking to buy in the area. So I thought I'd be proactive and see how I could support you. Have you thought about selling? Is this an opportunity that I can help you take advantage of? Right? I'm putting it back onto how can I support them? Right? And then if I ask them, well, great, do you want to get together? I give you an idea what your home is worth. And if I feel that hesitation and I read that hesitation, I turn around and say, you know what, Wendy, I just want to let you know, just because I come over and give you a presentation does not mean we're working together. I look at this as applying for the job of being your realtor, and it's my job to earn your business by working hard and supporting you. And that's all I want the opportunity to do. And after we meet, you might leave with some cool information. And if you want to work together, great, let's work together. And if not, that's completely okay. You can 100% ghost me. I'm comfortable with that. I just want to know how I can support you. How does that sound? Right. So all my scripting will always, 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 always boil down to that. If I'm at a social event, someone's like, my favorite question, how is the real estate market? Why do you ask? Right. Oh, well, we thought about selling. Well, fantastic. Have you had someone in yet? Well, no, I'm not really ready for that. Definitely. I fully understand you're not ready for that. I also do understand, though, it's sometimes hard to make these decisions without a whole bunch of information 
right? So here's what I like to do. If you want, I can come over, I can support you. Now, Wendy, it doesn't mean that we're working together. I look at this as we're applying for the job of being your realtor, right? I'm gonna give you some great information. At the end of it, if you don't like it, or if you like it, great, let's work together. If not, that's completely okay, you can ghost me. You see how the script is also ingrained, I use it a lot, so. So that's the the essence of scripting without taking another 45 minutes to go through it. Uh, Anna? May, awesome. I mention, may I mention something before we go? The most important uh, lesson from what you did right now is we have to know and learn these scripts. You are great because it's coming out of you so, so naturally. Yes, 100%. Like, and this might sound really funny. When I, the very first day I got into real estate and I had a script and you may, some people you might relate with this. I had a script in front of me. I had to read it from the page and it's like, I couldn't barely make a sound. It was like my whole world was just tightening up inside of me. And I was so worried about what everybody would think around me. And I was so worried that everybody thinks that I'm, I'm just trying to manipulate them or mess them over. Right. Um, and it really scared me. Obviously, I'm not that way anymore. Um, I'm definitely comfortable with it because first and foremost, again, no matter what scripts you have, you have to make it about the person in front of you. But more importantly, number two, you're using a script whether you like to think you are or not. Like, it's not like you enter into a listing appointment and you're like, okay, I'm going to clear my brain of all knowledge, all plan, because I don't want to be scripted. I do not want to manipulate them. So I want to go in completely brainless. Here, let me just stop sharing that because that's kind of annoying. Um, wait, how do I stop? There you go. So I, I'm going to go in with with no, um, no, nothing in my head, and I'm just going to blurt out whatever comes to mind. If you do that, then you are going in unscripted, right? That is why the scripts that you use are so important because you have one, whether you think you have one or not. The difference is is when you have a good script you can now properly guide your client to help them make the best decision possible right? and make sure they have everything answered for them, right? And to make sure that they frame their own limiting beliefs and their own objections in their head. To me, it's not about, yes, I beat their objection and I got it out of their head. It's like, hey, that is a fear. That's a limiting belief you have. And I want to support you through that limiting belief. That's an objection handler for me, right? Um, if they have a legitimate objection, if they're like, yeah, no, listen, I'd love to move, but you know, my wife is in the hospital with cancer right now. I'm not going to be like, well, you know, there's a few nice places that are closer to the hospital, right? Like there's a legitimate objection of not wanting to move in that, that moment. Right. Um, but I also want to figure out through my scripting, what is a limiting belief and what is reality? And that is a part of our job as realtors is help them sort out what is reality for them and then help them either overcome that limiting belief, take that leap or support them in what they need to support. If now is not the right time, don't be afraid to be like, you know what, man, I don't think you should move right now, right? So scripting is very, very important under those guidelines, right? So like, here's an example. One last thing I'll say on this. Who here has ever had a friend or somebody they were talking to at an open house end up using an asshole realtor that screwed them? Okay, I got some harsh news. That's your fault. Potentially, that is your fault. And I'm not saying it's your fault in the sense of like, oh, you're to blame. And I'm not trying to make you feel guilty. What I'm trying to say is if you were well scripted and if you were there to support them, if you didn't do everything in your power with your follow up, with your practice of your craft to earn their business, then you allow them to go to that other realtor. And so that's how I view it. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to put blame on anybody. That's how I view it. And I don't want to be the reason somebody gets stuck with a realtor that's going to mistreat them. I'm going to do everything in my power for that. So that's why scripting is so important on that regard, for sure. Lots of great takeaways this morning. Thank you so much, Nathan. This was amazing. Oh. We're so excited that we had the opportunity to have you on this morning. Everyone, go get it. Apply some of this amazing stuff that Nathan just taught us. And thank you for letting me go 15 minutes over. I do appreciate that. <laughs> it's all good. It was hey, worth it. Nathan, thank you so thank much. You. Have a good day, everyone. Thank all right. You. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.